first time ever in the history of the BBC <laughs> that we are going to have a female principal guest conductor. My career started in China first. I studied here many years. Then America. Then I thought the region that I really need to open up is Europe. And that's why I left for Italy. Well, you studied under many masters, including Master Mazel. He has a very Oriental philosophy about conducting, and he didn't believe conducting is teachable. He thought you can be a conductor or not, naturally. Right now, China is a huge market. Everybody's looking at China. China, in years, let's say 20, will become one of the biggest stage for classical music. I came this way because of music. I loved music. I love music still. It's music that brought me to, to be doing this. Good to see you again. Nice to see you again. And welcome back to Beijing Thank again. Thank you. Thank you. Do you come back a lot? Uh, once or twice a year. That's not much. Yeah, I hope to come back more, but I, that's about the time I have in a year. You're too busy. Yes. How many performances, how many concerts we're talking about? The recent five years, I've been doing about mm, between 80 to 100 a year. That's like That's one in three days in a year, uh, on average. Yes. That's a lot. That sounds a lot. People say, well, this is the first time ever in the history of New Jersey Symphony Orchestra that we are going to have a female musical uh, director, music director, mm -hmm. and with the BBC... <laughs> And they're also saying the same thing. They also First have never ever had in a history a women true. principal guest conductor. Yes, I'm starting uh, in America. I'm back to mm. America in, in this fall with New Jersey Symphony. So, mm. um, and then with um, BBC National Orchestra of Wales. That's in Cardiff. I mean, did you plan all this in, in Europe and then back to America to work with, you know, philharmonic orchestras of different cities? My career started in China first. I studied here many years. Then America. Then at that time, I thought the, really, the, the, the region that I really need to open up is Europe, mm. particularly continental Europe. And that's why I left for Italy. And here she comes, Jian Zhang to conduct the Orchestra Symphonica di Milano Giuseppe Verdi in Tchaikovsky's Manfred Symphony. For us to be a conductor, orchestral conductor, we have to have some sort of background or experience in continental Europe, because that's where this music is from. It's about the tradition. The tradition, and not just about the music, also about how they work and how they perform, and the tradition of how to play orchestras, all of these. We do think they, they are from that region. Six years ago, when I was leaving to go to Italy, I knew that I wanted to come back to America uh, one day. I know that that was the plan, is to have a stronger comeback. When I was younger, I felt very fortunate that I started on the piano very young with my parents and then go to music school. I went to Central Conservatory of Music, had great teachers, both in piano, I, I was a major in piano, then conducting. When I was learning the piano, music, whatever I played, Debussy or Bach, got into me as a musician. And it would later translate or to be used later on as a conductor. And I still go back to that route as a pianist to now to conduct. That's like a reservoir that you store water in there. And then when you're a conductor, you use that. To, that, that's your musicality. Mm. Perfect. And you need that. The, the, the bigger the pool is, the more music would be out of you. You know what I mean? In other words, you have to put yourself in the shoes of an instrumentalist. You also have to be quite advanced in, in a way, in whatever you, you choose to learn, before you change to a conductor. Is, is this a that's really important. Otherwise, the conducting becomes uh, some kind of sport or, or dance. It's not too much about the movements. It's, it's more mental and more coming from knowledge and the understanding of the style and the music and all of that. It's, it's much more. But why conducting? I mean, this is such, I mean, it's, it's so different compared to being a singer, being an uh, instrumentalist. I, I always felt that the whole path of me beco becoming a conductor was, was not my, my choice. 
I, I felt that I was somehow pushed onto this path that I wasn't chosen by me. By what? By who? By destiny. I met Professor Wu, mm -hmm. Wu Lingfen, when I was 17, I think I was. Okay. And she started me to learn a bit. I think I took maybe one or two months of lessons. Mm -hmm. Then I went into the college, the conserv conservatory. Yeah. I thought that was fun. I was, was at 20, I think. Uh, Professor Wood, uh, he, she was supposed to conduct Marriage of Figaro. Yeah. Uh, this is the Central Conservatory. It was, I think it was 50 years anniversary of the school. And I, I played for her yeah. rehearsals mm -hmm. for singers. And I, I, I learned the score too. I, I knew it quite well. And I, of course, I never, you know, expected that, to do anything else. I was just assisting. But then she, she came to me and she said, tomorrow there's a general rehearsal with singers, chorus, orchestra. And before then, I never touched a, an orchestra. And she said, tomorrow you, I, I will, I will not be there, and I will be calling that I'm, I'm sick or something. And she said, tomorrow you're conducting. She planned that she would be sick she, the next day. <laughs> she wanted to give me a chance. All right. But I, as, as a, a conductor or as a pianist? As a conductor, at, at a very, very late notice. <laughs> I said, OK, I will do it. And you were 20? I was 20. And I was literally shaking when, when she told me I couldn't. And in front of you were all professionals? All professionals, yes. To be a conductor, you need to have the sense of authority, you know. But you don't get you, that from the very beginning, you exactly. see. We were always so young so and what did so you do? nervous. What did you do to cope with that? You just had to do it. That's how I felt. I've been like somehow given this chance. I just had to take it and did my best. That, that's how it got snowballed. Every time it's like this. But I think many conductors came out this way. Mm. Many. Like Toscanini was playing the cello in the orchestra right. and then some That's conductor right. got sick and he picked up the baton and it yeah. happened. Yeah. Many things like this happened. <laughs> I came this way because of music. I loved music. I love music still. It's music that brought me to, to be doing this. And I admit that I, I feel more at home or more comfortable being a conductor than being a pianist. Well, you studied under the many masters, including Zhang Xiaoying, yes. including Professor Wu Yu said, yes. and including... Yufo. Uh, including Professor Yu and then uh, including Master Mazel. Yes. So what did you learn from all these masters? From um, uh, Ms. Zheng, um, Zheng Xiaoying, uh, she was... She's like the conductor. She's almost the teacher <laughs> to every conductor exactly. in, in China. She was my first teacher. She actually taught the whole class. We had four of us. We were told you cannot open your scores when you come to my lesson. Wow. Leave the score on the piano. When you walk out to the podium, no score. You have to come you know, from, from memory. Yes. And we did. Everything we conducted in her class, we did from memory. We and that's to. how you do things now? Now if it's a repertoire that I do often and I'm comfortable, I don't, I don't want, you, you never want to put the orchestra at risk. Respect yeah. the orchestra. Absolutely. If, if you don't have enough confidence in doing something from memory, then please don't do it, because you make the, the players really nervous. The players get lost. If, you, if, you, you know, if the conductor is confused, I would never put them at risk. If I'm really, really sure, then I would do it. But still, that was very good training. She was very strict. Mm -hmm. And she asked us not to take, take a, the, the baton just yet. She said, you're not ready to pick up the baton until I tell you so. Until you're ready, I will tell you that day. After a year of, it was all bare hand, which was fantastic, really useful. The conductors, if you can't use your bare hand, if you can only conduct with a baton, that means you're not a conductor. But how different does it feel? Very, very different. That's... How does it feel if, I, if you're walking naked? <laughs> but that's not, well, not it's the, the same, same case. It's the same. If you don't put, put, pick up the baton, Bare hand, you have to be able to do things with your bare hand. Then, then put a baton on, then you become, uh, uh, you know... People you don't see, have something to hold on. People see you from uh, far away, it's more clear okay. to see, for visual. That's, that's the only purpose. But you, you have to be able to do things with your bare, bare hand. If that's you're like not, the basic. That's the basic. If you can't do this, then you shouldn't use a baton. And she was absolutely right. How many, how many years? How, That's how after a year. After a year. Doing this, bare hand. And one day I was having lesson in her home. 
I remember we, we just ate dumplings. And we, had, we, had, <laughs> we had the table there. Then I was studying a Haydn symphony, uh, the surprise symphony. All of a sudden she said, now you're conducting symphony, and I think you're ready for a baton. I was shocked. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> At the time, I felt so rewarded. You know, I've been working barehand for a year, and then finally she said I was ready. I, it was like a big day. But she said, you know, this is your first baton, take it. She picked up a chopstick from the table where we just ate. I think it was clean, I don't know. But she said, use this first. See how it feels. And take it, practice for a while before, then I would give you a real baton. So my first uh, baton was it's a chopstick. It's a chopstick. Just to have that. Then not the chopstick. <laughs> but, but then I, I did for a while, and then she, she, she saw it was OK. And then by the end of that, the same lesson, the same day, she gave me a baton. Not this one, I guess. This one was a year, year later, uh, given by me by uh, Professor Yu, Yu Feng. Uh, he gave me, this was, used to be this long, I think he cut it, which made, made this just perfect size and length for me. And that's 25 years ago. And I've used You've it. You've been using this for 25, 25 years? 25 years, never changed. In, any the specific likings about this baton yes. or what? I, I like the shape of the handle. Okay. And it has to be able to fit into my hand, my palm, very comfortably. If you look at the baton shop, there are so many shapes. They're round, there's one without anything yeah. straight, or there's teardrop. You can look at it in any shape you can think of. This is my ideal shape, and I've looked everywhere in the world. I couldn't find identical, and the length of it, and the, the weight of it. So this is part of your, your music, part of this, your body. This, uh, I, I, I don't practice with the baton. Some conductors do. When I do conduct with, you know, in rehearsals or concerts, this feels like a part of my arm. That's why. It feels like an extension of my body. But I like the chopstick more. <laughs> yeah? The chopstick it's difficult. Story. The chopstick is difficult. It's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy and it's, uh, it doesn't have a handle. Mm -hmm. You need a handle to grab. Cincinnati. Yes. You, you left in 1998 to study yes. in Cincinnati for a PhD degree. That's right. And then I guess you were, you know, young, new student in a new world. I arrived late because of visa. I had to wait for some document or whatever. I, I got there, it was already early October. The school already started. And I went there, I landed, and I was already late for a conducting class. It was an orchestra class okay. in front of the orchestra. And the teacher said, oh, today we got a new student arrived, a doctoral student. They all thought I was undergraduate. I was very <laughs> slim. I was a little girl. <laughs> and he said, come here, conduct Beethoven First Symphony. I said, OK, Beethoven First is one of the first things we, we, we learned in, right. in Beijing. So OK, I, I went and conduct. And I, when I finished, and the teacher got a little little shocked because he, uh, maybe he's never seen uh, someone from China, I don't know, but he... <laughs> Low expectations maybe at the time, He didn't right? know what to expect, and mm -hmm. I was very, very little, and, and I actually went pretty well, and the, the, also the musicians, the, the players felt a little shocked. I would come you know, out of the blue this, in the middle of the semester. I can conduct perfectly fine in front of the orchestra, but if you ask me to speak something in English to them, at the time, I just felt very embarrassed. I wasn't comfortable enough to open my mouth and speak loudly to a group of Americans. Mm. You know, that was difficult. For me, it maybe took me three months to at least to speak, not feeling embarrassed. But that's very quick, three months only. I had to do it right then, and I couldn't do it in the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> I was so shy. Right. I just felt really uncomfortable. It took me a while to, to, to overcome. But it, it, once you got over it, it's OK. Yeah, I will.
Do you know about it? Yeah. In 1998, you went to America to do your PhD degree and then the competition? Well, no. These young people are not competing with one another, but are being evaluated against standards set by the great conductors of the past. The award of this conductor's competition to Hyun Chang. And then you got to know Master Mazel. She's been well trained as a musician. She's intelligent and has a commanding presence on the podium. When she walks to the podium and stands there, people know that this is a person of quality. You feel that right away as a natural authority. And then the associate conductor. The years with New York Philharmonic really opened my years. It opened up your horizon. Absolutely, absolutely. And also varieties of things. See. It's like tasting something. If you, you've tasted something really, really wonderful, delicious, mm. and you know the difference, you notice what's less you know, yeah. tasty. It's, it's a little bit different. You can't go back once you've tasted the best. Uh, you can, <laughs> but then you know the difference and yeah, you know true. how to get it to be better. You, you know the difference once you learn it. But if you don't know it, you never know it in a, in a way. Mm. So what did you learn from Master Mazel? He said conducting is about mental projection. Something visual? Or? He says if, if, you, if the conductor has the right rhythm and the sound in his or her head, that whatever he does would not matter, but what matters is what's in his mind. So he calls it mental projection. Last month in New Jersey, one of the board members, uh, an older gentleman, he asked me, how much time you prepare for a rehearsal? I I'm guessing um, one hour to 10 hours of your time of preparing to study. I said, that's not enough. One hour equals to my time at least 20 hours of study. And that's what Mazel meant by mental projection. If you learn the score so well, that you would definitely have the orchestra sound like how you want it. And he calls it not even to get the result. He says projection, which means if you think this way, it would happen that way. It's projected. We have a similar <laughs> proverb in Chinese. Basically, for a painter, if you try to paint bamboos, you should have your bamboos in your heart before you even start. Exactly. That's, that's what you mean. He has, a, he has a very oriental philosophy about conducting. And he didn't believe conducting is teachable. He thought you can be a conductor or not, naturally. Mm -hmm. You can't teach this. But you can teach this and the experience. And you also can't really teach being a musician. You can teach knowledge. You can teach historical ac aspects of you know, all of that. Yeah. But eventually, coming down to what kind of musician you are. So techniques, probably, yes, you can teach but yeah. not musicianhood. I believe this can be taught. Mm -hmm. But musician and also the other things you, you can't teach. Also personality you can't teach. Personality is huge in everything you do. Interesting, you mentioned the word, the word that you used was to open up yes. Europe. Yes. Uh, what do you mean by that? To open up a market like in business? For artists like us, uh, we, we also talk about markets. Mm. You know, right now, China is a huge market. Everybody is looking at China. All the orchestras in the world would like to make a tour in China because they consider this to be one of the newest and the, the most uh, interesting new market in musical world. And we, we know that. And uh, I feel very fortunate that I'm from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, now people are realizing that also in the Western world. So now when I go guest conducting with, you know, it could be Holland or it could be anywhere, then people would ask me for a Chinese piece, which means they're changing their view of China. Mm. And Do you which get means, that a lot? Yeah. Chinese which piece? Yes. N not just the request, but I mean, in, indeed the uh, orchestral works. Yeah. And they would ask and they would consider what I suggest, and that, which, which is great, fantastic. That didn't happen, let's say, five years ago it didn't happen. And in the recent years, I think the, the status is really uh, rising. The people are seeing China in this, in this way. It's, it's rising, which is fantastic. There are new music halls everywhere in Tianjin, Nanjing, uh, 
Uh, Juliet is coming actually to Tianjin. Uh, exactly, the second uh, campus, exactly. the second school. Yes. So it's it's the world is realizing that, and also the population. But not just the country's population. I mean. Musical education. We're talking about 40 million people studying classical music in exactly. China. Exactly. That's a huge market, kids, right? Children. You, you see the difference in education.、Uh, let's say in America, if you have a kid, the parents would like the kid to become a sports star, to play football,、mm. or whatever, basketball. But in China, parents want them to learn violin or piano. And Be that's, artistic. That's fantastic. In years, we're going to see that we're going to see the benefit coming back. What would be the benefits? A public with more knowledge of music,、mm. if they have learned anything in, when they were young, they would be more um, um, possible to open up, to be interested, to come back as our audience. And the editor in chief of Gramophone, they even said, since we have such a huge foundation, and at the same time we. Have so many classical musicians popping up on the international scene. Tan Dun, Lang Lang, yourself, and everyone. They say, well, in the future, possibly in the foreseeable future, China is going to reshape, say, classical music scene. Absolutely, absolutely. I think China in years, let's say 20, will become one of the biggest stage for classical music. It's already happening now. But in let's say 15 to 20 years,、mm. this will be become one of the largest and the most、mm, exposed, the hottest spot for classical music. Let's say like the BBC proms.、Mm. In years, Beijing or somewhere somewhere in China will be like that.、Mm. Will be very much、uh, um, paid attention to. You mentioned education.、Mm. How is Chinese music education? The the thing about education here in 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 China. I mean,、uh, professional musicians. I'm talking talking about conservatories. Is that the education tends to be a little bit too technical? Okay. That we all have great skills. All the conductors, this、uh, to start with, or you know, players, violin, let's say, piano, technique. The Chinese have really have the, the best techniques. But what I learned overseas is the essence and the real value and the real understanding of the music. That's what. Uh, in the West, they 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 care about, they really value about. Also,、uh, exactly the essence of being a conductor. In America, you had to learn history from the, the Gregorian chant to very detailed music, mu Western musical history. We learn it here, but very very limited. Okay. We barely learn anything before Bach. Here in Beijing, we learned maybe two symphonies or three at, in one semester, in in four months. You know, we learn in details, but very, very slowly. Overseas, they learn repertoire so quickly. It, but it's great. It's good training. You have to learn something overnight, very, very quickly. That's great combination with your your foundations laid here in China、exactly. and then. Exactly. If I didn't have that, I would not be able to at least you know effectively conduct、uh, in such a short study period. With all different orchestras from different countries, or say different cultures,、mm. how different does it feel to be working with musicians from different countries? If you're a really genuine musician, you can go anywhere. It's your best weapon. Because you've got the language, music. Exactly, and you don't need anything else. Even if you don't speak, if you just look at them and you have the music and you have. Let's say you have enough tools, you you at least give us clear beat, or you know you can show something, then then that's fine. Then you have your your best card in stock. Before the interview, we were talking about the musical scene. Said the music, classical music world is almost like it's another world. You know, 
your classical music. It's a very small living. world. A small one, but a very different one. Yes. It seems you have your own rules. Exactly. And we have to follow those rules. And pretty much that world, it's because it started in Europe, in the West, and still pretty much dominated、mm. by the West.、Yeah. For the Chinese, say classical musicians, it seems to have to follow, including yourself. They have to follow the rules set by the West. How, how do you explain and the world? In a way, it's like、um, you're getting onto a highway. You have to find your entrance. Where do you get in? It's very quickly moving by itself,、mm -hmm. but you have to find your chance to enter. Either by competition, competition, or by knowing a very、uh, significant conductor that who would help you. Connections. Connection. Or through,、uh, let's say, the orchestra. Let's say you're the assistant conductor of,、uh, I don't know, Los Angeles or. Still connection. Connection, a different kind of connection to orchestra or to to artists or whoever. The, the connection you have to find your entrance to enter.、Uh, for us, I think competition is a great chance. But it's not a guarantee. After you win, winning is very difficult by itself. But after you win, actually, it's still very very difficult. If you can still swim far, and you survive, so it's almost like you win the competition is to get a you, chance to be noticed. You win the ticket. Exactly. But how far you can can you go? Then that depends on how well you do after,、mm -hmm. and how your management, your agency would help you, and hugely depending on how you do each、uh, performance or each engagement. Now you have all these new positions. That means you're going to be working with orchestras, more from different countries.、Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? Actually, I'm looking forward very much. I think it'll change quite a, a, a lot in a way how I shape my calendar, my my schedule、mm -hmm. becomes、uh, quite different. You know, you work with three stable orchestras regularly for so many weeks. That's got to change in the way how I make music. I think. When you guest conduct, it's it's a bit different how we work. When you know the orchestras really well, and then you really know how to make them work, that's different. Things are different. But then I I have to keep my、um, guest conducting a、uh, more limited number.、Mm -hmm. I have less time, but then have they have to be on a very high level. Next year I'm guest conducting in September. I will be with Concertgebouw. Now with a London Symphony Orchestra, I have to keep it on a high level but very low number, which means I also have need to do very well. When I do limited number, you have to keep the the quality very high. You said you're not coming back to China in a year once or twice.、Mm. Do you plan to come back even more? Since you said China can, is going to be a major market course, in the future. Of course, of course, of course, I, I would love to. I would love to. It.、Um, We're planning some tours、uh, for the next maybe couple of years.、Right. Yes, uh, I'd, I'd love to. Absolutely, China. Also, orchestras、uh, are growing unbelievably. It's it's unbelievable.、Uh, I think、uh, it's very exciting what's happening in China. The the whole world is looking.、Mm -hmm. You know, musicians overseas. We talk about. Oh, I heard.、Uh, well, well, I just heard. Where is Tianjin? Where was it? There was a new hall built. Uh, somewhere else, there was a new hall. I, every time I hear, either a new orchestra has been、uh, started or a new hall has been built. It's very exciting. It's it's fantastic. Looking forward to seeing you more in China. <laughs> All right. Thank you once again、Love、for your time、back. for、Thank、sharing you. your、Thank、stories you. nice with to us. Talk Thank to you. you. <laughs> right.